Um, so the subject this evening, embarrassing things I've done for money. Oh my God, where would I even start on the embarrassing things I've done for money? I guess the most embarrassing thing was in the sex business. I was 17 years old at the time, living in Hollywood, California, going to uh, Immaculate Heart College, being taught by a bunch of nuns. This is all true. Uh, my favorite subject at the time, naturally, as a 17-year-old man-child, oh, was existentialism. I, uh, I, I just couldn't get enough of it, man. I just was like, wow. And I had this fantastic uh, nun existentialism teacher, and her big thing was, we're all free to be whoever we want to be. And she used the, uh, the myth of Sisyphus, uh, to illustrate her point, the uh, myth of Sisyphus, of course, by uh, French uh, madman philosopher Albert Camus. And in the myth of Sisyphus, Sisyphus apparently has done some heinous shit. So he's sentenced by the gods to push this great big rock up this big huge mountain every day for eternity. And it's only when Sisyphus embraces his misery, becomes one with the rock, that he finds his joy. And again, as a 17-year-old man-child ho, I just think that shit is deep, man. It is deep. Am I really free to be whoever I want to be? I don't know, man. I feel trapped between my cock and a hard place, frankly. <laughs> Waiting for that next pay-for-play date that I desperately desire and feverishly fear. And then all of a sudden, boom, as happens so often at that point in my life, it's Friday night and I'm on a job in the Hollywood Hills. And the Hollywood sign, it looks close enough to touch for the deck of the house that stands on stork legs anchored into the earthquake-friendly hill. It's 10.59. Rule number one, don't be late. I want to ring the doorbell with my finger, just don't fucking do it. But somehow, at 11 o'clock sharp, the doorbell rings and the door opens. A white-skinned, freckle-filled, red-headed woman in a pink Mono opens the door and looks me over like I'm a side of pork she can't wait to carve up. <laughs> On a brown couch, a jet black haired woman in a blue kimono holds a rose colored champagne glass. A gigantic plate glass window stares like an unblinking cyclops eye out of the city of angels twinkling its billion stars. <laughs> Baby, says the black haired woman in the blue kimono. Say hello to the boy. Okay, sweetie. Hello, boy. <laughs> I'm thinking, fuck, man, I hit the motherfucking load here, me and sweetie and baby. God damn. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> baby, show the boy where the money is. Baby points. And there are two hundreds getting topped by a butch-looking fifty, and I shove them all into my pocket. <laughs> oh, man, it's good. They're hot on my thigh, a prize for the desire I arouse. Cold, hard cash evidence that I'm somebody, because somebody wants to pay to have sex with me. And I'm getting all, you know, like woody already. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Baby, tell the boy to put on the outfit. Oh, baby, hands me a black see-through French maid's apron. I'm thinking, sure, okay, why not? I'm 17, I can do this, fuck yeah. So I start actually putting on the black see-through French maid's apron. Baby, tell the boy he has to take his clothes off first before he puts the apron on. Oh, right, no, I knew that. Yeah, no, I, of course, yeah, no, I'm gonna definitely take the clothes off. I was just a joke, I'm, yeah, I'm taking the clothes off right now and I'm putting on the uh, apron so I take off all of my clothes and I'm completely and totally, you know, naked. And then I put on the black see-through French maid's apron. Baby, tell the boy to turn around and show us his bottom. Oh boy, turn around and show us your so I turn around and I show them my ass. My head's getting all kind of red and tight and hot and I want to 
smash the plate glass window and I want to slash the giant vagina painting that's mocking me from the corner. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> Baby, tell the boy it's time to start hmm, polishing the silver. I'm sorry, I don't think I heard you. <laughs> you want me to no, you don't want me to polish it. Seriously, you want me to polish the silver? That can't be right. Rule number six, the customer is always right. So I stand there with my ass flapping in the breeze, polishing silverware that's already spit shine clean while Sweetie and Baby devour each other like snakes. A red amoeba of hair spreading out over the blue kimono clad lap of Sweetie who holds Baby's carrot top head between her legs, moving it first left, oh yes, and then right, oh yes, like it's her own personal joystick. And the room is filled with their slurpy, slappy, sucky sounds. And the air is saturated with that beautiful primal sex smell. It's like radio porn with scratch and sniff o -rama. <laughs> And the estrogen's just bouncing off the walls, and naturally my think my body thinks that sex is coming, so my Pavlov dogs are barking and humping the air. <laughs> While I Dust with a feather duster where there's no dust. <laughs> Clean, pristine mirrors and scrub immaculate kitchen floor grout with a toothbrush. <laughs> Lordy, fucking cocksucker, shut up. God damn, fucking bitch up, fucking kill these little fuckers. And then I decide, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna be the best naked boy cleaner there is. Oh, yeah, I'm getting this fucker clean. Yeah, I'm gonna have the cleanest goddamn girl in Hollywood. La, 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 la. And a deep peace sweeps over me. And then it hits me. Boom! I am Sisyphus. Naked in a black, see-through, French-made apron. <laughs>